Good morning. Okay, so that's quite a different one too, 98. Did we ever plan to do that one? All right, so after this, um, I have eight more blocks to make and my farmer's wife quilt blocks are done. This one's 98. I might use this in case I don't like, like I changed a couple of them already on this one because I did not like them. <clears throat> so they got scratched. These ones here I have completed. Well, I'm not completed. There's six more here I need to sew. Got them all cut out. And then I have these eight blocks left. And then I'm going to start putting this together. Hi, Tracy. Good morning. I'm going to start cutting out all my um, cornerstones, my sashing, uh, the, the, what do you call it, these things here. Oh my God, I can't wait to put this together because I know it's going to be so beautiful. Hi, Beverly. Welcome. So, um, this is how they want you to join all of the blocks. And I know they get joined on point. And then you put your sashing rows in. But these little triangles here I need to cut out out of my, I'll show you the, the fabric I'm using. So, I'm making the twin size. That was originally the plan. Hi, Tessa. Welcome. Yeah, I need to cut these these triangles out and from the muslin, which I'm not using muslin because the muslin I have is really, really hard on my needle. I don't know why, but it's just, it's so thick. And if you fold it and go through it, it's almost like trying to sew through uh, plastic. It's so hard. Hi, Rachel. So... Um, let me show you the fabrics I have. This here, instead of the muslin, I purchased 2.5 yards. And how much does it say? Muslin, you needed one and one quarter. I got 2.5 here. And this color is called Oyster. It's just a plain, it looks like muslin color. So that's why I purchased this color. So it looks like muslin. But it's not. I don't want to work with muslin. I don't like it. So, of course, it's it's a really nice, perfect color. It's got the same color creams in it that all of this uh, Rue 1800 fabric had. So I'm quite excited to use that. <clears throat> and then I got the backing, which I'm short. They said five and three quarters yards. I got five and a half yards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece my backing. Put a piece in it and then for the brown they wanted four yards i got four and a half yards so i might piece it with some brown and do it that way um and i will have a lot of fabrics left over from it so i might make a, a backing on here that says 2020 on it and piece all of the all of the words so all of the numbers i mean so i might do it out of out of um out of all my leftover fabrics i just won't use this color um i got the batting and the binding it doesn't tell you how much you need for the binding however i purchased i think two yards but i don't think i'll need two yards of binding so it's in this color here it's got the pretty paisleys on it that's part of the fabric line. I got two yards and you need nine strips at two and a half times 40. So we'll, we'll have plenty of fabric. I'm not even worried. I have, I have quite a bit of fabric left from the fat quarters from the 1800 brew fabric. 
So, yeah, and I'm going to have to use template 13, template 19, template 71, and template 22. I'm probably not going to use the templates because I'm, I'm almost sure I can just cut, I can figure it out with the measurements. I'm, I've got, hi Pamela, I've got... I've got these six to finish. They're all cut here. They're all ready to be sewed. So these ones here, this is one of the blocks. And then after that, I have eight blocks left to do and all my blocks are finished, Tracy. What a blessing. So, um, yeah, I will show you guys the blocks that I've got. And I changed a couple of them up in this last set of eight because I really didn't like some of the blocks. I was sick and tired of them all being like flowers. <clears throat> so I wanted to change that up a little bit. So I'm going to just move this out of my way for temporary so I can show you all the blocks that I do have completed. <coughs> i got a little tickle in my throat. Goodness. Whoops. Um, why is my camera crooked now? Holy crap. Let's fix that up. There we go. And we will move it up. So it's in view. And I'll move it over somewhat. No, that's too much. Okay. Anyway, you guys can see. So I'm just going to show you a run through of all the blocks that we have completed so far. Yes, this is going to be a stunning quilt. I, I can't even wait. And, and the thing is, is all of them go on point. I got a hangnail or a piece of skin and it, it's hurting me. I rip it off. There we go. So yeah, they're all going to go on point. So this is one of the, the, the ones, this one and this one are two of the blocks that I changed. I don't remember which blocks they were, but that's how this is going to be sewed on point. And this is called, oh, what was this called? Something ladder. So there's that one. Oh, this one's pretty too. I love this one. So it's going to go like that on the quilt. Some of you will remember all of these ones, these blocks that I made. This one, so pretty. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. The colors really bring out the eight. This, these patterns really bring out the vintage look of the 1800 Rue fabric line that I used. It does look like old, old fabric, <laughs> something from the olden days. And it that's the whole purpose of this. This book is from the 1930s, or sorry, 1920. Uh, wives put these blocks together in the 1920s and got together and made a group. So there's this one, and this one here is the same as this one, but only re it's a little different. They're not the same. They're a little different, but I mean they're similar in in pattern wise, but they're kind of reversed. So when this gets sewed, it's going to get sewed on the diagonal. So these will get sewed together like that. So there you go. Then there's this one, which I absolutely love this pattern. Yes, I remember. I'm so happy to see you working on this quilt again. Yes, I love the colors too, Beverly. They're just stunning. This Rue 1800 fabric was just stunning fabric line. So, I mean, sometimes it's like really hard to see the colors in the camera, but in real life, these are very vibrant. They look like they're really pale, but no, you can really see the colors come out in those. So I'm trying to show you what they're going to look like on the diagonal. And there's that one. So we'll put it over there on the diagonal. That's how this, this one's really cool. I'm looking at it up at the camera and I could just see that 
that round shape. That looks so neat. And this one here was not fun to make. <laughs> I remember cussing at this one, all those pieces to get these to fit and doing those Y seams, which I really hate. And then there's this one. Some of these were so fun to make. So, so fun. And there's that one. And that one. So that's how they're going to look in the quilt. That one. Will this be done as a quilt as you go? I would think you could. Um, you could, Kathy, you really could. But I think I'm going to quilt this on my long on my uh, long arm frame. I'm going to quilt this by hand, not by hand, but by my machine. But I don't have a long arm quilting machine. I just have a long arm frame that fits my sewing machine on it that I quilt a lot of quilts. But I usually stack up four or five quilts before I start pulling that all out and start quilting them. So there's that one. And I want to lay this quilt out so I can mix dark and light. You know, I don't want to have two big, dark, bright ones beside each other or two dark ones beside each other. I don't want to do that. So there's that one. These are actually the same almost. This one here has got a four patch in a triangle in here. This was just a square. And... We snowballed the corners. It is a little different. It's not quite the exact same block. Yeah, that one's a little different. And this one here is beautiful. And that one. This one here was super simple. It's just a plain, simple little block that looks still pretty. Um, no, no, what I like to do, I find it like I done a quilt in my living room. I actually use it and I quilted each block individually and it quilted it so much that it made it so stiff. So what I'm going to do is just find a really pretty pattern that I want to make and free motion quilt it on my quilt. I'm, I want to leave this all kind of like traditional and. I'm going to just maybe do something. I'm going to look and check what they did back in the 1920s when they quilted their quilts. I want to see if I can find a design that I can actually do free motion. So we'll see what, what we can come up with. That one's pretty too. This was my all-time favorite block. <laughs> I, I still adore this block. I just think this block is so cool. Love this one. And then there's this one. I really like this one too. This one turned out cool. And then this one here. I just stuck with the dark and the light browns. And that one. And that one. This one, this one's pretty too. Very, very delicate looking. And then we've got one that goes like this. And then this one had a lot of pieces in this, very tiny. This here is similar to the one I just showed you, but they are different sizes. So this, you can see they're not quite the exact same size. This one's bigger. It's a solid piece. So, yeah. And this is just a simple Ohio star, which I adore that pattern. This one here was not fun to make either. These ones that you have to do the Y seams in, I hate that. I'm not a big fan of Y seams. This one was really fun. Really cute. Very pretty. 
and that one, that one, that one. This one here looks like bear paws, but it's really hard to see because of the colors are light. Good morning, Debbie. Yeah, some of them look like an arrow. That one. That one. This one's very pretty, too. I love the color combination in this one. This one's unique. If you notice, the flying geese, the colors are brown over here. They're green over here. So I just reversed the green with the brown. So this is kind. Of, this is how the pattern went. So that's how I done it with the green and the brown. I think that's really unique. And then I, of course, had to do one with the flower basket with the lace on it. So this one has a lace handle. That one. And then we have this one. We got that one. This one's pretty too. They're all pretty. And then we'll go this way. This one's kind of unique. Go that way. Yeah, the lace one is so cute. And that one. That's just a simple, very simple pattern. That one. Here's another one with the basket, with but only I didn't use lace. I left it rough around the edges, as you can see. But I did sew it several times over and around just so it never frays. But I I like it that it's it it's like a frayed basket kind of thing, and that's the look I was going for. So I love that. So that's a, another kind of a of a basket, just different shape. And then there's that one, and this one, and lastly, this one. So I don't even know how many blocks are here. I have to have 83 in total, and I know there's quite a few here. So I, I just don't know how many. I didn't count them, and I will count them to make sure I have exactly 83. <coughs> <clears throat> so this was block 67. Um, I don't really need to follow any kind of instructions. I know how to sew this together without looking at the pictures. So that's just what I'm going to do. Sew it all together and uh, get these blocks finished. It'll be a blessing to have them done. So, first things first, we have to sew all the half square triangles together. So, no matter where you start on this one, they're all very, just very tiny little half square triangles. And it's going to get started in sewing them all. First of all, let me get comfortable on my chair because I have a bad knee that's really giving me havoc lately. So I'm just going to, doesn't really matter. I will have to look at the pattern probably to put this all back the way it was. But half square, these half square triangles will be all the same when we're done. It's just, some of them are going to be flipped differently than others. So that's all. So, and there a lot of these next six ones that I'm making have a lot of these tiny pieces. And then I got sick of cutting them out and I was like, I'm going to do something different. Because all of these ones here in these last, the last two weeks that I just did, they're, they're just all big pieces, little pieces like that. Of Well, you'll see when I lift up this blue one, what the one underneath looks like. 
I tried to get every different, you know, there was a hundred and eleven blocks and I needed to choose 83 out of the 111. So I did my best in choosing them. But there's this few odd ones like I was getting sick of doing these ones repetitively over. So that's why I changed it and made those other two blocks that you see. And then I'm just going to see what I have in store for the last eight blocks. And if I want to change any of them, I will change them. But I kind of want to try and stay. I don't want to change too many of them. But I just think this quilt's going to be so beautiful when it's done. So when it comes to cutting up all the rest of the pieces, like the, the beige and the browns and all them, I'm gonna, I got a pattern that came in my in my um, it's, it's over there in my thing. I haven't even made it yet. It was the um, charity quilt from Back Quarter Shop. And in that charity quilt, they have a backing that I can follow. Unfortunately, I can't give you the pattern, but you can watch me make it. I'm going to piece the backing and make it where it says 2020 on it. Just, you know, because I want this to become an heirloom quilt. And that year on the back of that, with all the year 1920 fabrics, the piecing for that's going to be super easy because I have the full instructions for it. So that's going to be a lot of fun to make. All right. So um, I'm not really going to iron these just yet. I'm just going to um, press them with my finger, finger press them open and put them all back where they were. Okay, so that's those. Now, I might as well do these little pieces here. So I might as well sew this to here. Because I know I've got to sew these three pieces and then attach it to that one. It's pretty much common sense what you've got to do. And I like to do things to... The dark side so I'm going to call the green the dark and then we'll just line all those pieces up nicely like that okay so we'll finger press and we'll attach this to here should match up pretty good my cutting wasn't the greatest Okay, and then we'll push that to the dark side. So that's how this is going to go, like that. So that piece is joined. Now, I'm going to open up the book. It's block 67, so I'm just going to go reference back to 67 so I can put it back the way it was. Sixty-seven, and it's called pine tree. That's this block here. So that's sixty-seven. So I don't remember which one I used for dark or light. I think I used this for dark. No, light. The pink. Okay, so this is my light. All right, so we will iron these to the dark. So they go like that. I go like this. So 
just want to put it all back the way it was. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Ruby, did you get to watch the video? What video, Debbie? Oh, my God, what video? I'm so sorry. I didn't even know you gave me a video. My mind just doesn't like to work anymore. Oh, my gosh. How did I not watch her video? Oh, did you post me a video for that those bags you made, uh, Debbie? Oh, my God, I'm so bad. If you did, I'm so bad. Because I didn't even see it. I haven't been on Facebook much. I go and post a picture, and I don't even go see if anyone's commented. All right, so there's four rows of this, and then there's the solid block that goes here. That's going to go like that. I just don't feel like ironing all of these. And then this one's going to go on top. And that one's going to go like that. So that's one side. Oh, you sent it in Messenger? Well, when I'm done today, I'll go and watch it because I love watching videos. No, that doesn't look right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. It don't look right. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. These will be the size of this when I get these sewed together. So this should be like that. Okay. No panics. I was going to say that doesn't look right. I got to forget that they are not sewed together yet. There, and our last four blocks. So that one goes there. So it's all going to go like this. These are such tiny pieces. I think these are like one and a half inch blocks done, or one inch blocks. I don't know. They're pretty tiny. Okay, so I'm just going to start sewing them together. Kind of line it up the best I can with the crap job I've done cutting them. So, um, these two go together. These two go together. And what I like to, nothing to line up. There's no seams to mess. And I like that. No nesting. Beautiful. Okay. So need to sew these rows together. So we're just going to put these right back. And we'll put one seam this way because I have to nest them. And one seam this way. Because these two here do have to be, these seams here have to be nested. This one this way, and one more to be nested, and this one this way. So that's going to complete that. So I got to sew these together and sew it onto the block. So that's what we have to do next. So that one goes that way. We'll go this way. Mm -hmm. 
and this one went this way. Unfortunately, it has to go that way. All right, see? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two four rows together, and then I'm going to attach it to the block, and then I'll sew these two rows, and then I can attach all of them together. So that's how that's going to go. <laughs> Those two together. Open pray. I did a good job at nesting them. Hi. Hey. All right. Now, sure, why not? We can go this way. It's not going to really matter this one here because they'll just get attached to here so there's nothing to line up so i'm just going to push all my seams that way like this and then we'll sew these two pieces together and these two are nested like so And then we'll sew it to here. Hopefully it fits good. Probably supposed to square each one of these up, but you know me, I don't bother. I don't square nothing up. going that way we'll go this way with this okay so that's how that's gonna go and now we'll sew these two pieces together make our rows this one together lots of tiny pieces that's all I can tell you Hi, Martha. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fine. Cool. I'm fine. Sewing up a storm. I see this. What? I said, I see this. You're so, so, sewing. So, 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 studio. Hmm. Hopefully I don't screw up one of these blocks. All right. Last one for each. We'll sew the two rows together, and then we'll join it to the other block. Oh. Oops. Okay, so this one is the top row, and this one is the second row. Now we have to nest all of these. So all of these are going to go in this direction. Wait. Uh, am I going the right way? Yes. So they all have to go in this direction. So that they match up there. And then these go in this direction.
cloth. Now we'll sew these two pieces together. So we are going to nest them here. I have to nest all these seams. Kaka. There's so many and they're so tiny. You can handle it. Oh, I know I could. I'm actually going to use pins. Too bulky with uh, clips for such small little pieces. <laughs> Morning, so. So, studio. Someone else has that in their head. <laughs> Not just me. Yeah, but every time we sing it, we say, so, studio. <laughs> it comes back with the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, sing it right. Damn it. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, you know, I do have some threads here hanging that I don't like. Get rid of them. Let's see if we did this right. Push it all up. All my seams have matched. Yay! Now we will match these two seams. Oops. Yep, that's right. Match this one. And the rest of it doesn't have to match. It's just these two here where they're joined. It's very important that you match those up. Um, it is done. Time to trim it up. So we'll iron it first. Uh, is that one called a tree or something? It's called pine tree. Yeah. Pine tree. Yeah, pine tree. It's a little wonky. Too many small pieces and stretched diamond diagonals. So I will put it as straight as I can, even though I might have a crease, crease in it here and there. I don't care. You won't see it in the finished quilt. But I hate all these little tiny pieces because they're really, really hard to get them to all match up. Yeah. Mm hmm. So underneath this one is this one. Oops, I see pieces. That one's pretty too. Yeah, I like the little whirly jabs in the corners. Yep. A lot of tiny pieces in this one. Again. Okay, let's cut the wonky off. So I'm going to keep this straight as I can. Up in the middle somewhere. Lots to trim off, but it'll be even all the way around.
best it's going to be. And it didn't quite cut through here. I think I will line this up just to get it nice and straight because I don't know how much of it I needed to cut. There we go. So now we have the finished pine tree. All finished. How cute is that? Cute. That's how that's going to go in your book or in your quilt. Okay. Time to sew. So this is block 50. Get rid of this now. This one is block 50. So you got and all your blocks out, right? How many more you got to sew? Um, one, two, I think five. Right. Because remember that one I threw in the garbage? Yeah. Well, I made a different one this morning. Ah. Yeah. And I made, shoot, I don't know where it is now. I see it. I made this one this morning in place of the one I threw in the garbage. Yeah, that one I made the other day was too short. And I don't know what happened. So that one is the one I made in place of it. Sweet. Yeah. So now we'll just add that. These are all six and a half inch unfinished blocks, which means... When I sew them together, it'll be a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. It will be a six inch block finished. And I still have lots of fabrics left I'm quite happy about. So now I'm just going to chain piece 900 pieces. Because that's what it's going to feel like. Oops. Didn't quite go on the edge. Actually, I'm just going to make, I'll do one pinwheel at a time. They make my life a lot easier. All of them will go to the dark. So let me look at the book to put these pinwheels back to what they were. So there's block 50 called Honey's Choice. That's the name of the block. So the dark one went like this here. And the dark one went like that there. Like that. And like that. And then I want to sew these two pieces together, nesting those two seams. Of course, there's going to be nesting in this. Love that. Same with these two seams. I'm going to nest them. Is that the way I'm going to sew it? Yes, ma'am. Morning, Marina. Hi, Marina. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I have sunshine. You have sunshine? Nice. I have sunshine. 
So I better than yesterday. It rained all day yesterday. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't so too nice. I went through my stash. I found a frame that would work on the album, and I've decided to make it a crackle. So I played around with different things this morning. Ooh, see which color would work better with the colors. Nice. Um, Ooh, bring it up closer to the mic phone. I mean, so, uh, yeah. Those are the three different ones. I'm just to show you that the that's the paper. That's gonna go with it. I don't want to like the one. I like all three of them actually. I do too, but I think what I'm gonna do is go with this one, but with the middle color, like the very light color. Yeah. And then, uh, but I, I'm not sure about the sparkle though. That that's why you see a white strip. It's um, a clear sparkle. Yeah. But I don't know. It just kind of dilutes because the colors, like when I'm gonna put up, it's gonna be like this is the I painted the colors. I don't know. It just kind of throws itself off. Well, I think the letters look pretty good on the one on the left. This one? Yeah. That one is... But then they go good on the white one, too. Yeah, well, yeah, but I wanted to do it on this one, like on the, the warm color, like the inside of this, rather than the white, because I thought the white might be a little bit too much. Yeah. So I was gonna do that it pretty good, and then yeah, I think I'm gonna st stick with it because this it's this it's uh, this color here, but a lighter version of it because this one, Jack, I don't know. I've been mixing so many freaking colors on on now. <laughs> I hate when I do that. <laughs> That's the one I mixed yesterday, which I've already changed. Yeah, it might be this one. But don't ask me what color it is, because like I said, I can use them all. Okay, so I know this one is the first one. So I think this is the one that I mixed, which this one here, it, when I mixed it, I mixed it just pure white with, um, it was supposed to be a cream, but it ended up being a pink, a, a green one. So that's how I ended up with this color here. I don't know. And you're doing this to go onto the frame, right? Yeah. Like, okay. So I'll show you the album. Let me make sure my hands are not for paint. This is the album. Don't get it's it on the paint. Cover. So when you look on it, see, I'm kind of liking the pink. So it draws up the pink. Like this. Yeah, I'm liking the one on the, yeah. The one in here because yeah. it'll bring up all the good. colors. This yep. one's a bit too strong. Yep. The white is too stark. So I'm thinking of this one in the middle that it'll bring up all the smaller pieces around it. I agree. I agree. So this is just the first layer. And I've discovered that I have to put at least two or three layers of the metallic because otherwise it um does not come through on the paint yeah <clears throat> but look ruby i did your suggestion but i did it on the silhouette so this is the beginning of the waterfall and then so the hidden waterfall yeah the hidden yeah. waterfall nice so I, it, I redesigned it on the silhouette and made it bigger so that it would fit the new album Nice. I just, have to, I just have to um, do the rest of it, but I didn't want to do it until I got to that page because I decided right. the waterfall is kind of going to be in the middle. Right. Very good. Very good. Good morning, everybody. I'm craving a pumpkin spice coffee with peppermint mocha cream. 
Ooh. Oh, so I got an email from Keurig. Yeah. Basically saying that the Keurig Elite is not going to be available now until mid-November, beginning to, towards the mid-November. Uh-huh. So instead, they would like to upgrade me to the Keurig Supreme Plus, which is their newest machine that just came out last month. Right. Um, which is about $50 more expensive. And Didn't you have to show proof? Yeah. You give them, um, when, you buy, when you buy a Keurig machine, there's a serial number in the back of it. And when it's sold and you register it, that serial number becomes proof of what you bought. Oh, okay. Nice. So maybe I should start registering my serial numbers. <laughs> yeah. So um, because of that, they sent me an email offering me this new machine that they just came out with. <clears throat> so when I looked at all the reviews, it's pretty much the same as the Elite. The big difference with the Supreme Plus is that it does as small as four cups and as big as 12 cups. And it's got a, a 78 ounce reservoir, which is perfect because we go through that much. So I said, I called them this morning and said, okay, I accept the offer. What do we do next? She goes, nothing. You just let me know. You're letting me know. And I'm going to give you a, a shipping number. And it's the post. So I got the shipping number and the order number. So they should be sending it out today. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Well, you know, like after spending 200 bucks on a machine that keeps breaking down, why would you want to go with the same one? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Keurig uh, Duo, sorry, the Keurig um, K50, which every time I bought it only cost me like 50, 60 bucks, lasted for two and a half, three years. And now all of a sudden, the more expensive ones that are over 200 bucks only last. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. I hear pitter patter of feet. He is wandering around. When she wanders around, she's just going to go potty. Okay, so if you notice this one here. Look at all of, look at the bulk in here. So what you have to do is you have to split open your seams that go horizontal, not vertically. Ruby, so, why don't you put the camera on you since uh, I'm just painting. Okay, one sec. So you're going to take out those two little stitches that actually hold it together. So there's two stitches here and then there's two stitches on this side. You want to take them out because we're going to make this into a spiral right here so that uh, it lays nice and flat like I did on this side here. Nice and flat, no bulk. So basically you just open it up. Open up your spiral here. So you got one seam going this way, one half. And one half going this way. And then I hear pitter patter. And then you just open up these tiny pieces. Like so. And there's my little tiny spiral in the middle. And it's nice and flat. So we're just going to give that a little pressy. See, no bulk, little spiral in the middle. And that will, that, because if you leave it the other way, when I go to quilt over top of this with my needle, it's definitely going to break my needle or it's going to break my thread. And that's not, and I'm not going to be a happy camper because there's nothing more annoying when I'm quilting is breaking thread or busting needles. Yes, ma'am. I think on that one. What? I hear you on that one. I hate when the thread breaks or the needle breaks. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got one half of it done. How pretty is that? I gotta put my dog out. 
Tia, do you need to go outside, baby? Hey. Come on. Nope, this way. This way. So what you up to, Martha? Well, I just want to put a little laundry in, picking up the cat toys. And I wish she would learn how to pick up her own toys. Uh, and recuperating from yesterday. I had a good time yesterday. Good time. Did you go out last night? I went to a funeral. Oh, sorry to hear that. And uh, then she uh, had a luncheon at the um, pizza parlor. Yeah, some good food there. Then we all went to the bar. Well, now you come. Why didn't you pick up your own toys? So, I came up with an idea. I don't like, I don't like the glitter on the top. What about if I put it underneath to sparkle up more the gold? That might actually be an idea. Okay. So, which means I would have to do... Those of you that don't know about my dog, I have a dog that's 13 years old. She's diabetic. And she's blind as a bat. She can't see. And the minute I hear her walking on the floor, I go take her outside. Because if I don't, she'll just pee on the floor. She'll just pee wherever she walks. So that's why I rushed to go put her on the potty. Or put her on the potty. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I have to put her out right away or she will pee. So yeah, basically yeah. telling me either you put me out or I'll pee on your floor. I'll put you out. I always put her out as soon as I hear the pitter patter of her little paws. Because she woke up from her nap. She woke up from her nap, and I can hear her. And usually, when she wakes up, she's got to go potty because she drinks a lot. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. So those are going to nest perfectly. Love it. Love it. A little click there. So, Marina, they're just going to upgrade your Keurig for 50 to 50 bucks more? No, I didn't have to pay a dime. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're sending it to me for free. Sweet. Well, you got to remember, the original machine I bought was $200. So, I was actually downgrading it, downgrading it with the Elite. But that's because I wanted to go back to the normal machine as opposed to the duo so they said well no we don't have the, the release in stock until mid-november and we don't want you to wait that long so we're going to send you the supreme plus instead oh. which the supreme plus everywhere that i've seen it's listed at 229. yeah so which is a good upgrade and besides the supreme is a lot better because you can actually make hot and cold drinks with it as well Ooh, nice. I don't care what kind of Keurig I have. In fact, I think I'm going to go make myself a pumpkin spice with my peppermint mocha. Drink. Well, I thought you already oh, made that. That's no. right. I put the dog out. I go make a coffee. <laughs> so. 
So how much do the Keurig um, cups cost anyway? The coffee itself? Yeah. Depends on where you buy it, but most places yeah. like Costco and stuff like that, it's about 45 cents to 50 cents a cup. Something's going on. Oh. So, but I mean, you think about it, okay, regular coffee is going to be cheaper, no matter which way you look at it. Right. However, a lot of the times you end up making four or five cups and it ends up sitting in the coffee maker becoming stale or really um, bitter. bitter. Yeah. I would rather spend, you know, 15, 20 cents more and get a cup of coffee that's fresh every single time you make it. If yep. you're a coffee lover, I can understand that. I don't drink it. Yeah, but you can buy curing cups that are made with tea. And yes. you can make old tea. Yeah. They they have the cure the cure cups for tea and also yeah, they have uh, I, hold on. There's a selling point to this. Martha, let's say you don't want to buy the K-Cups themselves, okay? You don't want to spend the extra money. That's fine. If you buy the machine, you can buy the uh, piece that goes on top of it in the K-Cup itself, and you can use your own tea bags. Uh -huh. your own tea bags, you can use your own coffee in it and everything else. And the reservoir piece that goes into where the K-Cup normally goes on the on the on the old machines it runs you know five six bucks and on the newer machines it's up to 1999. oh jesus so, and you put it in the machine and it stays there permanently and you can put your tea bags in it or your loose leaf tea or your um yeah. you know, your own coffee and stuff yep i have my little uh it's like a little dispenser cup that you can put coffee or tea exactly in and exactly it. and that's what this is yeah, well, I don't dare buy anything like that. Usually when Herb went through his coffee, I had to buy like two coffee machines a year because of the calcium. Even trying to clean it out with the CLR and all that other stuff, it just got to shit. Yeah. Well, the other idea is you can always, um, depending on... I just boil. I just boil my tea. Oh, and I see. I don't have anything like that. Okay. You don't have any yeah. machine dispensary is what you're saying yeah okay yeah yeah our water here is too nah i wouldn't yeah. even get a darn dishwasher for this place it just tear it up and then so using distilled water is just out of the question as well then yeah. i don't know my machine's not sewing right so i had to pull this all clean it out baby clean it out i don't know if that's gonna help i hope that's all it is just a little dusty, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Looks pretty clean. Need a little oil? I'll give it a shot of oil, too. But I did oil it before I started using it again. I don't want to over-oil it, either. No. No. Because the guy told me you do that, then yeah. you're just going to have oil sitting in the bottom of your sewing machine. Yep. Over-oiling it. So has an espresso machine with a hopper on it. With the, what is a hopper? The only thing hopper I know is something about a TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what a hopper is. I don't either. Explain, so explain. What's a hopper? Okay. A hopper off me. So I don't know if you guys have ever crackled paint but i tried i've got like three different kinds of crackle medium and all of them came out lousy so i said you know what i know for a fact elmer's glue or um Amy's glue works the best i went back to my trusted two dollar bottle of glue as opposed to using all these fancy mediums they don't do for nothing how do you crackle with regular glue um I'll show you, but basically, once this... Oh, yeah, I'd like to see this myself. Yeah, once it dries completely, like I've got to... If you want to put the camera on me, I'll show you what I have. I'm going to. Don't you worry, you're a little, pretty little heart. The hopper is a bowl that holds the coffee beans that drop down into the grinder. Ah, oh, okay, oh. yeah, I've seen those machines, yes. Wow. Now, so, do you have to take the coffee grinds out of that part and put it into... 
the little cup thing that is separate or does it automatically feed it into the uh, reservoir, like into the um, coffee holder, the uh, filter, filter. That's the word I was thinking about. So all you need is just regular tacky glue. That's it. Uh, any kind of glue, Elmer's glue, uh, anything you want. Now for the sake of, this is not going to work. So I'm going to let that dry, but I will show you guys. Um, it's better so right. Yeah, because I got a bottle of tacky glue. Yeah. I'm going to pull out another piece of car chipboard just to show you guys for demonstration purposes. It is really, really easy. All right. So I'm going to just gesso it quickly and dry it. So you guys will see this from the beginning. So the first thing is you're going to use is you're going to gesso whatever you're using. And that's only because you want it because I'm using chipboard and I need to seal the background, but I use pretty much just so for everything. <coughs> There's that little wagon that I got. I'm, I want to take and sand it down and I want to crackle it. Yeah, I'll show you how. It drops down into a cup and then you use a Okay. Yeah. Tool okay. To pat it down. Yep, that's exactly right. Right. Yeah. I fixed it. You fi Yay. Yay. It's working. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be so cute. My iron always shuts off on me because it just likes to be a dick. All right, I'm just going to give this a shot of heat. <sighs> yeah, I think I'll go get a coffee while she's teaching that. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Yep, I want a pumpkin spice with peppermint mocha. Oh, make oh, me oh, one too. Oh, All right, Martha. I want to try one. Do you want me to use dark colors so you can actually see how the crackle comes through? Yeah. All right. So you're going to use the dark colors always go on first. Right. That's what's going to show through the crackles. <coughs> So you put on a layer of the whatever dark color you're going to be using. In this particular case, the dark one that I had was black. Pull off your, all right, so now you've got the layer of black in there and it's relatively dry. Now, obviously just for demo purposes, I'm doing this quick, but normally you would let it dry for at least a half hour to 45 minutes. Cause you want to, you want to be able to um, have the bottom or the bottom color cure quite a bit. What did I miss? Nothing, Nothing. much yet. Nothing yet. Cause I'm just basically doing the bottom so what i was saying ruby just to reenter 
you're going to use the darkest color of what your colors are on the bottom. So in my case, when I'm doing the photo frame, my um, gold, this one, that was my dark color. So in this case, for demo purposes, I did it in black. So then all you do is take a layer of your glue, just regular tacky glue, pour it right out of the bottle. Okay, and then put it on top of whatever it is that you want to crackle. And you can be a bit generous. Okay, now I've seen demos where they took a spatula and just spread it. That doesn't work. The spatula will just make it a big, huge glob and it doesn't crackle properly. So you want to use some kind of a brush to spread the glue onto whatever surface that you are doing it in. And it doesn't have to be pretty because you're not going to see this. Okay, now is there a difference between doing a heavy crackle or a light crackle with the glue? Yes. If you um, if you put a lot of glue on it, you're going to get big, huge cracks. If you let it dry a bit and... All right, let me repeat that. If you put a lot of glue on it, it's going to have huge crackles. And it's also, if you want it to not crackle very much, you let it dry. So the longer it dries, the less crackle it'll have. Okay. Wow. Okay. So in this particular case, I'm not going to let it dry because I want big, huge cracks. So I'm going to give it just a shot just to kind of give it a place and like really quick. And that's it. Now I'm going to use for demo purposes, I'm going to use the white. Uh, no, let me try which one's my white that actually works and I think this one Double check it nope all right I think I may have this one all right so then while it's still tacky while it's still wet you're going to put a layer of your lighter color all right so now you've got the so you've got the white paint on top you got the glue in the middle and the black on the bottom now normally you would just let it sit i'm impatient I want to crack it now. So watch. And it takes a while. It doesn't do it instantly. It does take a while. You don't oh, want it to, the crackle. You don't want to hold the heat gun too close because then it'll bubble your paint. Right. Well, I have to practice a few of them before I do my wagon. <coughs> Say that again. Said so I'll have to practice a couple before yeah, I do my wagon. Exactly. 
watch a couple of videos. I can link you the one that I watched as to how she experimented on a stainless steel cup and showed how to do this and what she discovered. So what do you look up? Crackling with glue? Crackling cake. Just crackling cake. Well, that crackled pretty darn good. Oh, sorry. Crackling paint with um, with glue. Crackling yeah, crackling with glue. With glue. Yeah, yeah, so this will continue to crack as it dries, but just to show you. That's freaking awesome. Yay, I don't have to buy no crackling paste. Yeah, no. nine times out of ten, the crackling doesn't even work. It doesn't work. Yeah, there was only one kind that was really, really, really good that crackled like this, and they no longer make it. They discontinued a year ago. I don't know why, but this stuff was amazing, and it cracked like that. But unfortunately, they no longer make it because – can show you I can do another one and show you the crackling medium and I'll show you the difference between the crackling medium now the crackling medium though unfortunately you do have to let it dry you cannot you can't well, dry. That's okay I don't yeah, need to watch that crackling medium Again? No, I like the idea of using the fancy glue. Yeah. I really do. No, but I wanted to show you the difference. If, you know, you're thinking crackling medium is the best way of going, it's not. I got crackle fingernail polish, and it depends on if you put it on thick or thin, yes. how the crackles yeah. go. You can use the crackle medium, to be honest with you. I love this the nail polish stuff. The na nail polish crackle, that is amazing. I just yeah, don't have any left. I don't have any right now. I don't I have any of that. I should get some. Yeah, it's not expensive. It's like you can get the, the wet and wild one, which is like a dollar ninety seven or something like that. Oh, really? That's yeah. Walmart. Yeah, Walmart it is. Yeah. It's cheapies. And it works like a charm. I have never seen the wet and wild crackle. You've never seen what? Wet and wild crackle. I don't even know what the name of the crackle stuff I got is. Yeah, I'll show you. I, I got blue, white, gold, black. I think another color. Turquoise. No. You, mm. Yeah, I don't get any of that stuff. Okay, this is kind of garbage. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a layer of the black, and then I'll go and see if I can find. Actually, no, let me do this all the way to the crackling medium. That way. So what would it be like to antique that, though? Say again? What would it be like to antique that crackle? You have to do it before you put the glue on it. If that makes sense. No, it don't. Okay. Do you want to yeah. antique? Okay. Do you want to antique what's on top of it? Or do you want to antique what, what's coming through? I want to antique the cracks. Yeah, you can. Once it dries, then I'm not quite sure how to do it. But you may have to look that one up. But it is possible. Oh, I know how to do it. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. I know how to do it. I'm just wondering if you can do it, though. I just don't know how. <coughs> no, I'm going to make you bed. Yeah. 
Pretty girl. Pretty girl. Come on, make you bed. While we let Marina dry her board. All right. So one of the items that I have is called the Crackle Medium by Folk Art. Um, except that I didn't have very much left with it. So I mixed it with the Demo Acrylic, also cra Crackling Medium. Same stuff, so no biggie. All right, so now the only difference is this one will have to dry for a half hour. Once you put it on, you leave it alone and then let it dry. Crying out loud. I stitched this wrong. All right. This one here, yeah. I'm going to put it off to the side. And we will come back to it in about 20 minutes or so. Um, wondering if I have a fan. Yes, I can put it under the fan. <sighs> All right, I am going to just give this a shot of just plain Windex because it works beautifully getting it all off. Let's sit there for a minute, and I'm going to go see if I can find a crackle, the wet and wild one that I was talking about. In the meantime, I'm also going to wash this out. So I'll wash them all out. That one I know I didn't need. Let it dry. That one. That one's All right, I will be right back. Do you want to put the camera on someone else for me while I'm doing this? That'd be great. Yeah. Put it back on all of us. I'm glad it wasn't on me because I screwed up. Got her right, guys. I did it right, Martha. Yay, Ruby. I had to pull it out. It didn't look like a pinwheel. <laughs> That's Marina's fault. I was watching her and not paying attention to what I was doing. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I have to blame somebody. So says Ruby's sewing has inspired me again. She mentioned her long arm quilting machine and it made me want to do some long arming today. Oh, sweetness. All right, I've done that, little baby. Press her off. I just love how flat that turns out. Oh, do I have this right way? Mm -hmm. Right way? Yep. Yeah. Click it on yourself, Ruby, if you would. Okie doke. There you I go. All right. Last one. That's facing out, facing in, facing in. And now we'll just sew these two together, and this block is done. I gotta just draw. All I have to do is butt these seams up, of course. Very, very important. It's very important. And then we can move this guy out of the way. So let's, do you want to sneak a sneak peek with underneath? Yeah. Ooh, lots of little pieces. Yes. 
another another pretty one. You guys were on video with me when I was cutting all these out, remember? Morning, Olivia. Good morning, Olivia. Afternoon for you. Yeah, it sure is. Late in the day for her. Give it all a little iron. Look at that nice, perfect square. All of my stuff matched. Yay. So good. All my flat little points are all flattened. So cute. So cute. Now, find the center of that middle one. Center of everything. Trim, trim, trim away. Trim, trim, trim away. <coughs> Sounds like you got a new blade on there, too. What? Sounds like you got a new blade on there. Yeah. I do. There it is. How beautiful. <coughs> oh, pinwheel block. That one I like. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous. I like it. Add it to the collection. Now, this is block 45. I'm about to start. Man, I can't wait for her to start sewing these things together. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, this is block 45. This is a lot of tiny pieces. It's called Great Basket. That's what this one's called, Great Basket. This one here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Incarnation. Uh, let's see. So that's going to sew to all of that. Okay. So that's going to sew there. That's going to sew here. This will be the last piece I put on. So let's sew this up. So the other one. So these two together. Just have to sew 10 million pieces and the little, little half square triangles. There's a lot here.
Olivia, what has your bloody nails got to do with tying a knot in a fishing line? Fingernails might prevent that. Well, you know how you tie a knot in your beadwork. Oh, uh, yeah. They get in the way. <laughs> Mine get in the way when I'm beating, not when I'm nodding. They wrap around my fingernails like Arr. Done. We got them all done. I still love this trim, this uh, cutter. But her fingers are bleeding. <laughs> all right, let's see what you've done. I know she's just done a odd oh, kitty kitty. says Ruby before you start the next farmer's wife quilt will you be putting a list together of everything needed for it or well, is I it far could. I could do that but the other one I wasted all my time for all of these farmer's wife quilt for people to just not show up anymore so if I do I'll just post it in the group but I'm not making an event out of it the farmer's wife too though is is that from a book yeah, I got my wife two book up here. Well, there you go, Olivia. You can just get the book. I got the new one. I was talking to Olivia. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's called, it's called the medallions or something. Where is it? Oh, I know it's up here. Uh, where is it? But I won't be starting this right away. I might work on my um I don't know. Might might not. I might work on something else. But this is called the Farmer's Wife Homestead Medallion Quilt. This one is stunning. Beautiful. Lots of gorgeous blocks in this, too. Yeah. Yep. So, said, or Olivia says she bought needles for her old sewing machine. For her old sewing machine? Yeah. Just there. Very particular on how you place these. <laughs> One wrong one's going to throw the whole pattern off. And one like that. So that is how this goes, right? Let me just double check it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this one here, it it's going to tell you in the back of the book what 
what size and I'm probably going to be making not the quilt or, or not the queen. No thanks. The queen takes too many blocks. The queen has 121 blocks. I'll pass. Um, I'm probably going to make the lap. Oh shit. I don't want these to be square. I thought I determined that already. I don't want a square quilt. I hate square quilts. 94 by 110. That's just too big. So. <laughs> An old neighbor gave her an old sewing machine. I think she used it three times, she said. Oh, and wow. 30 years old. Oh, shit. I don't want a square quilt. I absolutely, positively, absolutely hate Well, then add another row on. Yeah, I was just going to say, add, you know, another two, three rows on the bottom. It's not that easy with this. this look at this. It's not that easy. I can already see it. How can it not that be that yeah, easy? Making the queen size one because it's not square. It is 94 by 110. And I'm going to have to send it out to be quilted. Because it will not fit on my frame. My frame is, I can only go about 76. Because I need at least four inches on each side. It's an 84 inch. Is what I got it set at. And 94 is like 20 inches too big. It's huge. Oh, my God. And that's the number two? 121 blocks. Holy crap. Sounds like a next year project. Yeah, I'm not doing it this year. I want to finish what I've started. Damn it. Why, are, why aren't they giving you a twin size? Like, jeez. They gave me only two sizes, queen and lap. Where's the twin? Well, since they're all six inch blocks, I could just add more blocks in here. Pick 20 of your favorite eight inch blocks. Oh my God, some of these are eight inch. What? You need 28 inch, one 18 inch. 104 2 inch square template B. Oh my word. 48 2 inch by 4 inch flying geese units. Any 8 inch blocks. So, where in God's name is the 8 inch box in here? 6 inch, 6 inch. 8 inch. This is an 8 inch. 6 inch. Oh my god, I'm going to have to look through all of these to find 8 inch, 6 inch. What I could do is I could make my 8 inches and make extra. So however many it takes in this one to make the lap. Right. Okay, so that's the queen. That's the queen. In the lap, I could add one, two, three, four, four more blocks in this row here, four more blocks in this row here, so I don't distort this piece in here with the flying geese. If you can see what I mean, I, I don't care about the sashing. I can always adjust the sashing, but I don't want to be adjusting flying geese. Same with up here. I'm going to have to make extra ones of these B ones. And those are just squares with two snowballs on each end. Yep, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to add an additional 8 inches here. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. So it'll be actually 58 wide. Wait a minute. <coughs> How many times can you fit six into 48? Thinking eight. Wait. No. 
Six times six is thirty-six. Thirty-two. So thirty-two. Six, six, eight. It is eight. Six times eight is thirty-eight. Six times eight is forty-eight. No, I don't want that. I need thirty-two. Thirty-two is not possible. I don't think so. Six inch blocks only. Yeah, six, six times six is thirty-six. Yeah, that's not going to work. Damn it. I'm not crazy. Figure, that figure it out if I understood the problem. But I don't. I don't like. <coughs> Wait a minute. I could maybe. No, oh, because we're dealing with all eight inch squares. Six times eight is forty eight, right? Yes. So if I put eight six-inch blocks on each side and turn the quilt this way, it ain't going to matter which way I turn the quilt. It will go if I add in between on the outside of this. So I could add six-inch blocks here on each side as opposed to adding it in the middle here. Or I could add it up there. It don't matter. Right. Righto. Because one, two, three, four, five, six times eight is 48, right? Yeah, six times eight is 48. So there's six blocks. They're eight inches each. If I put eight, eight, six inch blocks, that's 48 inches as well. So I'm not going to lose inches in here. That, that will work. And I'm going to write this down because I'm going to forget. I will forget it. Um... So I don't have a pencil in here, do I? Well, I do. I just have to make one. You dirty bitch. Come on. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Here, times six inch blocks, and here, eight times six inch blocks. So then I will have, it'll be 12 inches longer. So 58 and 12 is um, 70. So it's not going to be a huge quilt, but at least I'll have way more blocks than this. Crap. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Anyway, I didn't really want to use my brain. And I also want to make my, um, my uh, family quilt. Since I got freezer paper, <clears throat> I can make that now and print off pictures on freezer paper. But I still have to finish my primitive gatherings quilt first. Not starting anymore until I'm finished what I got started. Just can't do it.
a vendor where I press the seam. It's just going to matter when I sew the rows together. And that is the, no, that goes this way. Oops. Oopsies. Right? Then let's turn this one right, and the seam needs to go this way. Seam needs to go that way. So that's how that goes. Correct? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together. And I can sew it to the block in the middle. My knee is just absolutely throbbing. Literally. I couldn't even sit long yesterday with Cassie when she was here. Couldn't do it. So I got a bit of a bulk here again, so I'm going to break down these two stitches. And I'm going to turn this into a pinwheel in the middle. Because it is way too thick. So there we go. Flatten it there, there. Nice and flat. Reduce bulk. Just went like that, right? These two, that one, and that one. Yep. And then we'll add this one here to it. So that one goes that way. Is this going to match up? No. I don't have to worry about that. Go there and I'll finish some of these. And I don't think it really matters. All the same way. All the same way. And these ones all go this way. So this is right, right? The looking right. It sure is. Okay, so now this one here I do have to switch. Double checking. Yep, that's right. Just don't want to rip it out and have to sew it again because that's frustrating. Okay. 
try to match these all up. <clears throat> Don't have to worry about bulk in this because they're so small, these, these uh, seams or pieces. But I just don't have nowhere to put the seams anymore. So just pile it all in. Come in for the ride. Damn, that just keeps getting turned. matter not gonna make a matter and this one will matter how oh, you press the seam the other way so I can nest these little bit of ironing Need to fix that yay it looks right okay now we sew these guys on on here then we have a square well we'll have a square when I square this sucker up and there we go now we're gonna iron it beautiful Okay, let's take a piece underneath. See what I told you? All these half square triangles, I was getting sick of them. <laughs> Block 42, that one is. All right, right through the center. Through the center, move that over a bit. Center, up a bit. So anything to trim off, just very little. Okay.
Betty. Look at that. How cute. Another block done. Oh, my God, my knee, guys. I just want to cry. I have no clue what's going on with it. But I've got to put my stuff back. I just have stuff in my way here. Have you ever gone to the doctor regarding that? What'd you say, Marina? Did you go to the doctor regarding that? No. Well, if your knee is really hurting that bad. Well, why do I got to go to a doctor? I already know it's because I'm old. Not necessarily. It could be something else. Yeah. I need a new, I need a knee replacement. He told me that a couple years ago. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. what I mean. Me and surgery don't get along. Yeah. You have to I hear you on that one. Huh? I hear you on that one. Yeah. I'm very pleased with this one. I just love it. It turned out so stinking cute. Yeah. I have one two three four quilts on the go oh and my moda quilt the moda blocks i'm not finishing it anymore i'm only keeping what i've got and i'm going to turn it into a small little baby quilt but i ain't making any more of these blocks unless i have to just to finish up i might have to make a six inch one to go on that 12 inch we shall see Yep, because then I'll have four panels. One, two, three. Yeah, I'll have four panels. I'll just put the four panels and just leave it a little crib quilt and donate it to my granddaughter. So that's all I need. One more six-inch block. That's all I'm making for this. I'm done with the Moda one. Because there's the 12. There's one six. And I need to make one more six inch block. And I'll pick one of their blocks that I like that have come out. And that's all I'm doing with this. That is that one. And then I've got these two on the go. I got I got my maple leaf quilt. And I got my primitive gatherings quilt on the go where I've got to sew all these oh they're already sewed oh I have to cut all of these nope these ones aren't all sewed this one is morning Gracie that one is morning Gracie that one is these ones are not sewed so this is the primitive gatherings one. Oh crap! More freaking thunderstorms today. And this is what the blocks. Hey, it's not like. I should open the windows. There's one of the primitive. This is one of the blocks. So this here is a light purple, and I found this beautiful light purple fabric. Where is the actual? Here is the pattern. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. So I remember I already did something here. I better not even touch that because I don't even know what that's for. But I do know I put some of my blocks in here. That was the second block to that purple one. See, that's going to make a full block. Keep them all together now this one here is all half square triangles the whole quilt except for like see this purple one here i should have four more purple blocks down here 
in this fabric in here somewhere. That's what these are for. Now if I remember. All I know is you needed 40 dark prints. Okay. Yeah, you need 40, in which I have. These are my 40 here, because here's the, the lilac, the, the, the nice pretty lilac. And then here are the rest of the prints. All right, so. All these colors. This is going to be such a pretty quilt when it, with these colors when it's done. So, like I said, I'm going to work on this, working on all my quilts that I started before I even attempt to touch another one. I want to look up on my shelf and go, oh, I have no more quilts left to do. And these are the 40 patterns. Ruby, that, the, med the crackle medium is dry if you want to put the camera on me for a minute after you finish that. So it's now completely dry. So I'm going to try and put. Where's the white paint? I'm, oh. Give me a minute. So the the remember the crackle medium went first. And now I'm going to put the white paint. But you're going to see the difference. It's that and to the glue. I already know I'm going to like the glue one better. Oh, yeah. you frick. Glue is going to be ten, 10 times better. The glue one is or that one? The glue. Oh, yeah. Definitely. By a long shot. So to get the glue to crackle, you have to use a heat gun? or No. No, no, no. no. Okay. You can let it sit on its own. Okay. I'm, I hit it with the heat gun to make it go faster. So to give you an idea, this is what and it'll continue cracking, but you can see it is not very much at all. Now, I don't yeah. know if I've done that right or if I've done it wrong, but I don't like crackle medium. I'd rather use the glue. I see what you mean. See the difference in the two of them? Thanks for the demo. Oh, yeah, look at the crackle with the glue mm -hmm. there's a big difference and elmer's glue is big actually even better elmer's glue is even better because it's not as thick so it actually crackles a bit a, a bit better i just don't have any elmer's glue i'm out i'm okay. out and i keep forgetting to buy it every time i have okay. a store <laughs> but yeah elmer's glue is actually better and i also won't you won't see because <laughs> right now you can see some of the white glue is still drying so you can actually that part didn't come out too well but that's the difference between the two of them i'd like this one better yeah i do like that too so i mean you don't have to go buy all these expensive things you could just use regular glue there you go okay fine good demo good demo i learned that when i was trying to do a um, another frame for a friend of mine that wanted it fancy and I discovered that method with the crack glue and I was like, ooh, I wonder if it works. And it did. Yay. 
But I wanted to try it on the wagon to see if that worked, and yeah, it doesn't. Q, Q. So now going back to these two. So I did a demo with the Crackle. I only have um, gold. I only have the gold Crackle. I'm actually liking that too. I'm actually liking that. I'm liking the white underneath with the gold on the top. Yeah. Nice. So I'm actually thinking of redoing the the, the frame. Frame. <laughs> Redo this in white paint. Uh, white. Um, I don't know. So that, and then the letters on top of it. Just don't know if I have enough crackle to reach the whole frame. I don't know. I kind of like it. Hold on. Let me look at it against the... It kind of dies down, though, doesn't it? That If you look at this one right here. It doesn't pick it up at all. It um, blends too much in with the paper. Yeah, that's that's the word I was trying to find. Actually, but I didn't try one other thing though. Hold on. I gotta try one other thing. And that is do it this way. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking some of the acrylic paint and I'm painting it onto the nail thing. Oh. How's your coffee, Ruby? It's really good. Very good. Right here. See? Oh, you can't see. Oopsies. It's right here. I was drinking it. Yum yum. Mm -hmm. Okay, carry on. Now, these all these blocks all look this. This looks identical to what I just made. Kinda, yeah. What the hell? Rearrange it. Spruce it up a bit. I don't want this one again. I just made this one. Why did I make two? See what I told you? Everything was starting to look the same to me. Oh, it is a little bit different. This one's got a triangle in the corner. This one doesn't. This one has a square in the corner. And it's got three colors here. Okay, yeah, it is a bit different. All right. Okay, fine. Well, I'm not going to rearrange it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> just going to do it. Get her done. If my leg will let me. My knee. This knee is really driving me wacko. <clears throat> You know, uh, what? never mind, never mind. I'm checking something. I was going to tell you something, but give me a minute. I got to see if the answer's there. Okay. There's that piece. It's already crooked. Mm -hmm. And that piece. And 
does get sewed together a little differently. Yeah, I hear you, Suki. I hear you. I'll just sew this one to here. Good, good, good. Now, for these ones here, the bigger pieces here. So we're going to sew these together, sew these together. Ah, I see. Okay. We're going to do one at a time. When I do a whole bunch at a time, I mess them up. So this one. So that one can go there. Or the green and the brown, the pink. So that goes that way, and that goes that way. So those will go like that, right? And then this here, now stitch to here, like so. My flying geese never line up. So that goes there, correct? So these two are together, yeah. And then this two go together like that. Oh god, it would help if I could get things straight. Oh. Stay straight. Ow. I went really fast because my knee just quits on me. <laughs> and my foot just hits the gas. Hey, Kathleen, Brent. How are you? All right. So, I'm going to go like that. And this is where you're going to huh. catch this in the middle. Here's hoping I get it centered. Not, oh well, I'm not going to fret over it. That needs to go in here. What? What? 
What? Come on. This has to go on first, and then this piece. Wow, that looks like it's gonna be not big. If it don't work, it's going in the garbage. That's all I can tell you. It'll go in the garbage. All I hear is pitter patter of a uh, keyboard. Yeah, sorry. Um, I had asked Tanir if he wanted to go and do something with Gil today, and so I was answering his tell. Oh. Yeah, I'm bored. I definitely want to do something. I don't blame him. I don't care. Let's go do achievements. Let's go do mythic. Let's go do something other than LFRs. So. Okay, so let's sew these two together. That I was answering Stacy because she did a live last night with Barbara Hamilton and they were having trouble seeing the chat so i sent her a message this morning saying that she had to click or the person that's joining her in the in the stream yeah. had to click on the comment tab on the right hand side they may not have noticed it because when you first start streaming like, like when you started it this morning and uh -huh. i joined and martha joins it goes straight to private chat you have to click on the comment section to be able to see it when you go on youtube Without oh. opening YouTube, you don't have to open YouTube at all. Right. So she didn't realize there were two tabs there on the side that you could click on. Okay. Okay, I gotta switch these seams. And what did Tanir say? Uh, Tanir came back with, um, hang on one second. I'll read what he says. Because uh, I, I says to him, just checking to see if we are doing anything to get today or tomorrow. Let me know if you're interested in maybe getting something together to finish our achievements and test our, out this new build that we all had to reset. And he came back with, LOL, the build which 
changed a lot once we have dungeons and raids. I can barely use my mods, but hey, I was happy to help. And so I had back, yeah, I had to delete all my mods too. Like, you know, I, I had a completely frozen thing. I said, but I'm up for anything other than LFR because it's too freaking boring and not enough challenge. So now maybe what he's going to answer with that one. Did he answer you or no? Not yet. Remember, he's out in Germany, so it might take him a while to answer. Oh. That's why I'm kind of surprised he answered this one right away. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, please. Cooperate. Being a bitch to me. <laughs> Basically, your story machine is telling you to take a hike this morning. What? I said, your sewing machine is telling you to take a hike this morning. It is. And I'm just here sitting here playing around, really, really liking this thing but it's too freaking light yeah but i am liking this nail polish so i'm going to put nail polish on it oh damn you machine I don't really think it matters which way those seams go. Here. Of course, it's too small because I don't know how to get anything so right. Now, this one better fit on here. It barely does. A bit big. Not sure why. Not sure what their problem is. Right. <clears throat> Ow. Hopefully when I trim this up, it'll look better. It looks like shit right now. use nail polish to, to do art with <laughs> besides a bit on your nails there we go it looked awful till I trim it up I don't know why this scrap shit bothers me but it does so that went together quite quickly so that that one and this one and they, are, they are a bit different not sure if you can see the difference this one's got a square this has got a triangle here i'll come up closer Put the camera on you i'm just painting there's a triangle there and a square here and basically the rest of it's the same 
So this one here is called, uh, this one's called a fruit box. The other one's a grapevine. This is a fruit basket. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it's still cute. Good enough. Let's see what's under here. So that was 42. That one's done. This one is 28. Looks pretty. A couple little half square triangles. Oh, do these. these four corners. Not sure what this one's called, but it's pretty. All right, so I'll call the green the dark side. Why not? This is block 28. It's still, is this still part of the farmers? Oh, oh yeah. This is called duck and ducklings. Duck and ducklings. Hey. Called duck and ducklings. All right, now you need to sew these pieces to here. Ooh, I have points. There. My glitter nail polish is all over my frame. Nice. Yeah, like I said, I use nail polish just as well as why the heck not? I'm uh, going on pictures, so and it looks a heck of a lot better. And I think that's going to come through beautifully. But I am going to let let it dry for a couple hours now because nail polish does take a while to dry, especially when you put it on heavy. I did, I did. Because afterwards, I'm going to put either the, uh, do a crackle white or the crackle, um, crackle gold, one or the other. Right. But there's going to be a crackle. So you're only going to see the glitter come through, through the crackle, the golden right. glitter. This is what I want. Right. It takes a while to dry. 
Oh, I wanted to show you my background. I'm going to, or my backing. I'm going to do that. I'll show it after I get this square done in there. All right. So this to here. You rat. I don't know why that pulled out of my needle. You dirty rat. <laughs> I was holding it. it. Reminded me of that movie wherever they say you dirty rat. Let's 
try this again. Okay, so are these going to nest? So that went that way. This one has to go this way in order for them to nest in the middle there. Now, oh, let's see here. This one here has to go this way. to this. So we have nesting going on. And I'm glad it's just these two spots. The rest of it, no. so I can give this square good cross. Right, done. And those two seams are going to nest. So nice. I like when everything just comes together. Like that. So that's 1080. I don't know where that pin went, but I hope it fell inside that pin. Okay. Let's have a look at what's in here. Another. Oh, yeah. This one's pretty. Love that one, too. All right. This one's done. This one turned out more square than all the rest of them ever did. have a new one. I promised to give this one to my daughter of these rotating mats. She can have my old one. She gets all my old rulers. Is that the one that don't turn? No. The one that don't turn came in my sew sampler box last month. Yeah. That one don't turn. And I would never give that to my daughter for sewing. There. Look Great. at that. That's the way that is. Isn't that oh, right. cute? It is cute. All right. I only have eight more blocks after this one, and we're done. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys my backing I want to do for this and I'm just going to quit sewing for a little bit. My knee is not cooperating. It doesn't matter how I sit here. Even when I'm on the couch I have to keep getting up like every 10 minutes, 15 minutes because it just starts aching. And if I'm standing on it I have no pain. It's when I'm sitting. Why?
Oh, it's so uncomfortable. I just need a minute for it to subside. Ruby. I, what? Can I make a suggestion? What? Have you tried a neoprene knee brace? No. You should try it because it could possibly be it's doing the same thing mine, mine was doing. I can hear the clicking. Yeah. I've been telling yeah. her to get a knee brace. Clicking. Yeah. If you get the neoprene knee brace, what basically happens is it heats right. up from the inside so that it helps keep your muscles pliable right. at all times. And it right. also lessens the pain. It's not expensive. Walmart has them for like 25 bucks. And you wear them during the day. And trust me, they work. It really helps when I do it. Because I drive a standard. And after driving for long hours of time, oh, my God. I'm just screaming in pain. Yeah, but it's also the arthritis that's kicking in. But in yeah. So it really, right. really okay. helps. So this is my Bloomtopia backing. This was a quilt kit I purchased last year or this year. This was their um, <coughs> quilt along that I didn't do. But all I'm going to do is I am going to make this out of my fabric because this is the fabric that goes into that uh, backing all these it's called the backing set this is just a backing but that's what it looks like right here you can see it on the quilt i like the pieced pieced backing that's going to go 2020 too bad i couldn't spell 1920 but then that would be lying because i didn't make it in 1920. <laughs> uh, i don't know but that's i have lots of fabrics left to do this with this piece here mm, I think I'll just sew it onto chocolate brown and not make this fancy stuff. I just want the 2020. So once I see that 2020 is made, then I'll create a border and then it'll go into my regular a backing fabric. I don't want all this frilly stuff. I just want the 2020 to stand out and pop on the chocolate brown. I think it's going to look nice, really nice. That, that belongs to this quilt kit here that I haven't even touched either. This was a quilt along. They're long, long finished. You can just go look up the videos, but I don't need the videos to make this. This is the Bloomtopia quilt. quilt. This is the one I told you I was so disgusted on how they did the pattern. Look at all the beautiful fabrics in this. There's a ton of gorgeous fabrics, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy how they did this pattern. And I will never, never get a Chelsea and, and that's her name, Chelsea and someone or mom. I will never buy their pattern if this is how they do them. Because I, I have to do a lot of work for cutting. And what, what it is, is they wanted to keep this. They wanted to keep this pattern so you did cut out only one block a, mo a, a month or whatever it was, a block a month or a block every three weeks. I don't appreciate that because I want to cut all this fabric out. But see, they don't tell you here how much to cut, what size they are. They, they don't tell you jack in this. Same as when you, 
you would expect a cutting layout. If you're going to do a cutting layout, they're going to, they, they got it number one, five A and five B, number 14. Like, what is this piece? What is this piece? And they don't tell you that. It's very complicated. Is there a separate uh, what they want cutting you to do? Okay, so this is what they want you to do. Used in blocks 1, 5, 4, 58, 2, and 12, 14. I got to go back and reference the video or a reference the pattern to come over here to cut this freaking piece out. <coughs> I don't, I'm, I'm really frustrated with this pattern. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like cutting my pieces one at a time. I'm God almighty. Who does that? Who sits and cuts out a whole kid quilt? one piece at a time no the whole point of it is you do it all in one shot yes and then sew it all together and label all your pieces so this goes to this block this block that block yeah that's not how they did this i'm told you i'm very frustrated this is why i never started this pattern look at this is what they tell you here's all the fabrics pull all those fabrics out now go take the fabrics and cut a little piece off, put it back, cut another piece, put it back. I'm not doing that. I don't. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out on the back here, I've written on the background, four and a half times number one plus eight. I'm trying to add in here how many pieces of each I need to cut for that specific size. Isn't there any way of you calling or writing to the company to get them to do this for you? I don't know if they will. Like, but this, this, this is exactly how I wanted to see the pattern. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to reference. I don't want to go to, to release one. Look at all the fabrics. Pull all these out. Cut all these pieces out. Throw the fabric and put it away until I need it for the next piece. I don't want to do that. So what I did is I went on every single one of these and it's saying one four and a half inch square. I'm already mixed up. Square, yeah, exactly. 32 one and three quarter inch square. So what I did is I wrote it down on, I wrote it on a scratch page. Um, I wrote 32 beside the one and three quarter. And every time I went through the pattern, there was another one and three quarter of that specific pattern. I would cut it or, or mark it in here. It's just absolutely so confusing and so hard to do the patterns like this. If I was following along and didn't care about how I, I would have to keep getting my fabric out cutting it, ironing it, cutting a piece off, putting it, tossing it aside. My God, guys, there's just like so much fabric here. Why can't I just cut it all at once? Have all my pieces cut out, but that's not how they did this. And I'm not impressed. And this is all, this is all background here. So have at her. And you got triangles on a roll because there's triangle squares and triangle pieces in here somewhere along the line. I don't know where they are used. Wow. That's confusing. It's yeah. awful. Like this is definitely not a written pattern by uh, fabric uh, fat quarter shop because they don't write their patterns like this. Their patterns are written out exactly like this background a four. 42 pieces, blah, blah, blah. Background B, 400 pieces, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's how a quarter does. So this is the way this, this company, Chelsea and what is her name? Um, this was for the Make-A-Wish quilt that started from February 2020 to June 2020 benefiting make a wish but who who designed this pattern it was chelsea and someone i forget her name her and her mom i don't like this and i don't like the fact that i have to go watch a video i am an experienced quilter and i don't want to watch videos i know how to sew i know there are people that do want to do need to follow them but i don't 
and I don't appreciate that that's where I have to go reference everything. I, like, no, never again. Pain in the ass right there. Yeah, so now that their new one's coming out, their new Make-A-Wish quilt along, I ain't buying it. If it's not a fat quarter shop pattern, I don't want it. I don't want to have to do this ever again. This absolutely sucks. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of hassle. And I'm not impressed. Like I said, I would write, write to them and say exactly what you just said. Maybe based on your advice, they'll change it up. Maybe you're not the only one that is finding that totally confused. You could go buy this whole quilt on the whole quilt kit. They sell this whole quilt kit now. Now that the, the quilt along is over, it's been over for since June. Now that it's over, you can go buy this. You get the box, you get the backing. You gotta buy the backing separately. Oh man, who who who's the two ladies that did this? Anyway, not 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 uh not this is their fabric line too. So Chelsea and someone. This That's is all the right the colors in there. Kind of a I, fall fall colors there's a lot of pretty colors in here but martha i don't want to sit here and cut each one of these out as i go right I don't want to do that so no. this is why this is an i'm in no freaking hurry to make this quilt i mean the quilt blocks are pretty because these are the actual quilt blocks they are pretty but i ain't cutting all that out right now i ain't doing it I just, I need to sit down and say, okay, I have absolutely nothing left to do. I've made all my quilts. Then I'll think about doing this. Because yeah, I'm, right. I'm going to be spending hours on trying to decipher how I'm going to cut each one of my fabrics out and how many of each and what size belongs on which piece. Uh, yeah. I got a question. Can't you take that fabric and just make up your own design? Oh, yeah, if you could. I, really I, really, I really I really like this pattern. I do. I loved I loved it and that's why I bought it. Ah, okay. Yeah. If I start changing it now then you know defeats the purpose of buying the kit. You know. Um I did I will show you where is it? Which one is it? It's a big ass one. Right here. Is this it? Let me see the name of this fabric first. This might, this one here might be my next quilt. My line. I just need to see the name of this quilt. I'll know right away. <sighs> Burler Party. Oh, I don't think that's it. No. That is beautiful. Should I open the window? Hmm. Didn't want it to be. Of course. That's my eyes are shining. Here it is. Is this it? How's they do? If this is it, is it? 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 Here is the 1920s one. Oh, here's an example of how quilts are should be done. Patterns like this. You open up the pattern and look. Oh my goodness, look. Oh my goodness. This piece of fabric you need to cut all these. This you need to cut all those. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I mean, they didn't do that. 
And they really irritated me for that. So I believe this is the one that I purchased. <coughs> I purchased, I don't like, I didn't like the pattern. I bet you there's a lot of other quilters that bought that and thought the same damn thing. Yeah, I know. I guarantee you I'm not the only person that thought that. I'm pretty sure that this is the fabric line. I, I bought this. I didn't like the fabric or the pattern, but I needed the fabric. I loved the fabric, and I think that's the fabric I purchased for the farmer's wife, too. But I'm not 100% sure, but did I have to go through the mall? And I have too many to go through right now. But I'm I'm looking at this and it's looking very old style fabric. Yeah, I think this is yep. The fabric for my farmer's white suit. Um Ruby, Gracie Gracie Grace is asking, did you ever get back the quote you sent out to your mom and pop? Oh gosh, yes. Yes, I did. It's hanging on my quilt ladder. Yes, this is the fabric. This is really a retro fabric that's going to go super good. It's all those colors that they wore back in the old, old days. This very is the, old days. Yes, the very old days. This is the fabric right here. I bought, the, I bought it because I wanted the really antique old looking fabric, but I don't like the pattern. <laughs> not a not a fan of the pattern. Yeah, the pattern looks kind of blah. Yeah. It's stars. Like I don't I don't need another star quilt. But yeah, that's uh, I'm sure this is the one. The fabric is kind of ugly. But I mean back in the day their fabric was ugly. It's almost like the uh, Downton Abbey fabric. That's basically what it looks like to me. Like Downton Abbey. <sighs> Bye, Kathleen. Bye, Kathleen. Bye. So, yep. That goes in here. I have all my kits all sitting in tubs in my cabinet here. And I remember I ordered this because of my tea kettle. My tea <laughs> quilt. I absolutely fell in love with the teapot quilt fabric. So I went and bought the fat quarter bundle of it. This will make something gorgeous but these are all fat quarters in here plus there's two panels it's a lot of fat quarters it's called granny chic fat quarter bundle and this is what i make <laughs> out of so pretty this fabric i don't know i might use this for um this one here for what's it <coughs> It's called Vintage Housewife. And these are all the templates for it. I just can't remember what fabric I ordered or if I did. I know I have the templates and the pattern. Yes, that's what I ordered this for. I remember talking to a lady in the Facebook group saying that you better go get it right now. It's on sale. If you want it, go get it. Yep. She said, I'm unsure. I want to buy the fat quarter bundle too, she said, but I don't know what quilt I'm going to make with it. And I said, I think I'm going to make the uh, vintage housewife quilt with mine. And I went and looked at the pattern because you get the, the pattern for free. You can download the pattern for free. And this the thing is you have to buy all the fabrics and you got to buy the templates. And these templates are so cute. I don't know where I put the pattern because I know I printed it off. But if you go to Fat Quarter Shop, you'll see it's called Vintage Housewife. The only thing is you have to order these templates or you aren't going to be able to make it. 
because this here, it's got all kinds of things in it. These templates. These are all pieces that you need to cut out. Look, look. There's the oven mitt. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. So it's a Christmassy type of... No, it's not Christmas. It's just called Vintage Housewife. Oh, okay. It, it's all got to do with um, housewife Vintage. chores. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Hang, hanging laundry out, cooking. See, it tells you this piece. This is called Be In My Bonnet. So Samplers, Be In My Bonnet by Riley Blake. This okay. was definitely made I know by Riley Blake. What? She, I, like. I, I know Riley Blake. She I like. Yeah, and there's the pants that's going to hang off the line. I know there's a clothesline, and there's the shirt. There's Is there the a shirt. vacuum in there, too? I think there is. <laughs> <laughs> there's the dress, the laundry basket line. <laughs> there's a ton of little pieces in here. But the pattern does tell you how to use all your pieces, well, how many to cut out. It's by Lori Holt. She's the designer of this. Yeah, they're called So Simple Shapes by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. So that's what the granny, granny chic fabric is for. It's for this. That's why I ordered the templates. I think they were like 20 bucks or something. They weren't expensive, and there's a ton in here. Hmm. But I don't remember where I put the pattern. It's probably up there somewhere. I'll come across it when I can. don't need it, and I'll end up printing it off again. But it is a free pattern. If you go go to Fat Quarter Shop, type in Vintage Housewife, you'll see the, the quilt. It's really pretty. It's very housewifey. It's very... It says it all, <laughs> you know. It's housewife chores, basically. It's super cool. Okay, so what's it called again? Vintage Housewife. And it's on FatQuarter.com? FatQuarterShop.com. Mm -hmm. No. No. Which food? You go in the kitchen. Go in the kitchen. Okay, I'm on Fat Quarter Shop. Nothing for Vintage Housewife. Type in Vintage Housewife. Okay, I got it. This is Housewife Sew Log Guide Pattern by Lori Holt. There's two of them. There's one from Lori Holt and there's one from Lori Holt. No, it's Lori Holt. It's Lori's Holt pattern. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, let me see if I can go find it. I got it. I got it. Well, I want to look at it. Fat quarter shop. Yep, there you go. It is a pretty pattern. Isn't it? Yeah. Got the sewing machine. Yes, it's got your vacuum cleaner, Martha. It's got, <laughs> it's got a, 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 the big, large room. It's got even a TV, a sewing machine, an old-fashioned telephone, and a lamp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and an that apron. That's an apron, not a dress. Uh, yes, that is an apron. These are so cool. Like, look. Okay, I'm going to go look since you put the link in. I've yeah, and it looks like your clothes. Yeah. They oh, actually my goodness. Look oh, like yeah. Pigs. That's cute. Yeah, and then Lori, uh, sorry, Riley Blake has the same type of idea, which just repeats the pattern, but in, in, it's uh, straight instead of kind of curved. So you can actually see what the different pieces are in there. It's oh, got a, a stove with a baking pie. It's got your hanger with your iron. Wow, 
That is cute. I love all the clothes on the clothesline. <laughs> yeah. And it does have a dress. It's got a dress. It's got pants. It's got a shirt, T-shirt, socks, underpants. And then it looks like a hamper with clothes folded in the hamper. A little vase with flowers and yeah. old yarn. Does it look like an old typewriter next to the vase? Is that what that is? That's a, wait, that's a. It does look yeah, kind of like that's one. a typewriter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, an old typewriter. Oh this is so pretty. That is cute. And I think when I can afford it, I might try and get the thread set because I think you have to do some hand embroidery. And there's there's the, the patterns, the pieces I ordered for it right there, and they're 20, 2248 for the vintage housewife patterns, the templates that I just got. Nice, thick. They're nice and thick. Ruby, does this come with the backing though, or do you have to make your own backing on it? It looks like it might just be a plain white backing. Oh, I'll just use my own. And I might just use plain white. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, because I have lots of white. But yeah, you get this is the, the free PDF right here. You can download it for free. You can make the whole quilt. This is just so cute. So, so cute. Yeah, this is made out of her vintage, her vintage fabric, which I wasn't crazy about. Her vintage two fabric. I wasn't crazy about that fabric at all. So. Hmm. I have a lot of quilt kits, guys, but I just ain't going to sit there and pull them all out right now. Now, do you sell the quilts or do you just make them for your own? I I made nine. You had sold some. Hmm. I sold one. More. I made nine quilts for Christmas last year, and I'm talking full size quilts. Yeah, I remember and seeing. In that. January, I made Jeff's uh, Lord of the Rings quilt. Yeah. And then I started on all of mine. I made broken dishes. I quilted that already. It's hanging on my thing. I made the garden one from Shabby Fabrics. I quilted it. Uh, I made that one called the botanical well, that you had sent in. Yeah, that was by Olivia and Teresa bought me that quilt kit, and I got that one so uh, hand quilted by a, a, a mom and pop's quilt shop. And. I did my broken or did my teapots. That's ready to go. I did the binding, everything that's ready to be quilted. So that's the only quilt really I have finished right now that's not quilted. And I've got one, two, three quilts I kept. I, I'm not getting rid of my quilts. I chose not to sell them. And I just don't want to go on the, on the ladder and get them because they're really hard to get on and off. I got to put something on the ladder to stop them from moving or, or sticking. When I go to put them on, they stick. So I need to put maybe some batting on each of the steps and then hang the quilt over it so it, that I can move it off. You know, right now I can't move it on the wood. I'd be scared to tear it. Yeah. Yeah. Some batting or maybe it's some a pain in the ass. They're a pain yeah. in the ass to get on there right now so i've only got two quilts hanging on there and then i always cover up on the couch with my purple quilt that i got that i quilted and i quilted all of those blocks differently i did the, the borders differently that was very time consuming and that's something i just don't like doing so i'm just going to do all over patterns it's a lot quicker it's a lot easier and and you, you don't use as much thread because you're not quilting each and one of each and every one of those blocks. <coughs> that one I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to ever do that again. I'm not into these big fancy quilting quilts. If it's going to get fancy quilted, it's going to get done by a machine like my uh, botanical garden one is with all the succulents. And that one I haven't touched. I haven't used it. 
I haven't even washed it. I've washed my purple quilt. I'll show you that one. That one I washed and it kind of shrinks up and I love that because it looks so cool. The other one is still a brand new hanging on the ladder. So this one is the one I use all every day is my purple one. See this one here, every one of these blocks were quilted differently. Even the border is done different. Like you can see this is different, a different quilting in there. I did all these different, all these different. Looks good after it's been washed. There's a lot of quilting going on on the back of this. You can see all the quilting. But my favorite thing is it it just it shrinks up because I love the batting that I use. It's light. Um, it's got hearts, swirls. It's got this figure eight. It's got stippling. I did a whole bunch of different things in this quilt on all these blocks. But this is my favorite quilt because I love the purples and I love this. This was a kit I got from Shabby Fabrics. That's my label I put in it, but it washed up so beautifully. Like, look at how cute. Isn't it nice? I love the, I love the different designs around there, the different design there, and then something totally different in here. But this is my everyday quilt I use. I've washed it, I don't know how many times now. Because I cover up with this. On the Even all summer I covered up with this. This is my favorite quilt. The, it's, I'm not going to say it's my favorite. It is my favorite because of the colors. I love, I love the pattern. I love the colors. It's very pretty. I love the other ones too. And that's why I don't want to use them. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Like they just say. You're just hoarding them. We tend to hoard things that we Exactly, love. Martha. That's exactly what I meant to say. I'm hoarding them because I'm just, I just don't want to wash them because they, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to use them. Unless I get company, then I'll make up the bed and put a nice comfy quilt on it for them, but. I don't get company like that where they sleep over and just Patsy ain't getting my damn quilt. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, she's not covering up in my quilt. No can do. But I love, look at how it looks crinkly. You see it? It's all crinkly and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is my quilt. I love it. But I'm finding it. It, it should have been a much softer quilt, but I used a lot of quilting in this, like a lot of small quilting everywhere. So it makes it stiffer. The more quilting in the in a quilt, the stiffer it gets. And this one's pretty stiff. But you know what? When you wash and wash and wash it, you don't have to worry about your batting all bundling up in, a, in one big spot. You know how blankets do that? The batting just clumps up in the corner or in one spot. I ain't got to worry about that. But yeah, this is the one I use. Like when I go sit down in the living room, I'll be covering up with this. I just sit on the couch and cover up with my quilt. Oh, and I sleep with this. This is my baby. It's purple. And it's a little piece of heaven. All right, my friends, I'm, I'm going to get going. I'll see you tomorrow. I can't sit here anymore. <coughs> okay, fine. Yeah, I am. I'm done for today. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm going to go feed my birdies and let them out. It is now 1230, so time to feed me. Cause, oh, 
I got eight more blocks. So tomorrow I'm going to finish this one block, which will take me, what, 15 minutes? It'll be done. And then I'm going to cut my other eight out. Ah, nice. And then after them are sewed. Then I'm going to start cutting out all my sashing, my corner stones, the little triangle pieces that go. They look like this, but they go along the edge of the whole quilt. And then I'm going to try and figure out how I can cut that 2020 out with all my left. Because I have, there'll be lots of fat quarter pieces left. Like there's a lot here <coughs> left in fat quarters. There's lots of fabric oh, left. No. Like I'll barely touch that making my next eight blocks. Yeah. Yeah. You use hardly very little fabric. So, yep. That's what we're going to do. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.